Discoveries in technology, medicine and nutrition are emerging with accelerating speed and improving our health and quality of life. Join us in a series of conversations about exploring the new pharma and biotechnology trends. This is a view on streamlining the cell and gene therapy manufacturing brought to you by Lonza. If we think about traditional therapies, those that can be administered to a large patient population, they have pretty well-oiled processes and supply chain networks to deliver these medicines to patients. The situation, however, is completely different for emerging personalized therapies, such as cell and gene therapy. These treat patients on a much more individual basis. They require an unprecedented level of automation and navigation because the raw material used to prepare the end product is raw cells originating from a donor or a concrete patient. The manufacturing workflow consists of numerous processes that are specific to a single patient. And that means that the complexity is exponential, bringing a large risk of error. Sticking a simple label on the product is no longer enough. So the big question is, how can companies ensure that the right patient gets the right treatment at the right time. There's clearly a need for a software solution that can manage this complexity and standardize processes. Vinetti is a digital startup company creating software solutions for advanced therapy supply chain orchestration that can be used for personalized cancer vaccines or cell engine therapies. Today, we are talking with Amy Duros, the co-founder and chief executive officer of Vinetti. Hi, Amy. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. It's an honor. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So, Amy, could you explain what are the supply chain orchestration needs of personalized treatments and um, how are they different from traditional therapies? Sure. So personalized treatments introduce a whole new level of complexity for production and delivery. Uh, when you're tailoring individual patients and individual therapies at the same time, there's a whole range of different specificity and complexity that all the parties supporting supply chain production and delivery have to be focused on in a wholly new way. For the first time ever, we have GMP or good manufacturing principles that have been introduced into points of care. So you have care providers who are participating in a whole new way in the manufacturing process. They're either helping extract cells, they're uh, matching donor and patient cells. There's a whole range of different uh, behaviors and participation that they've never had to perform uh, until now. So you say that the care providers, doctors, nurses, have to handle GMP manufacturing for the very first time. Is this relevant only for cell and gene therapies or do you see your solution applied to other therapies as well? It's a great question. So we see applications for the Venetti orchestration platform in any aspect of therapeutics or diagnostics or device production where you are tailoring protocols to a specific patient. I will also say that uh, what one of the aspects of this global pandemic, COVID-19 has introduced a new level of visibility into the pharma supply chain, frankly, deficiencies. At the base level, what Vanetti does as a platform is introduce a level of fidelity, control, transparency, so that many different disparate stakeholders from the manufacturers in the GMP facility to the care providers, to the patients, to all the logistics providers, the distributors, everybody gets to look at a single source of truth to support individualized therapies. Now, cell and gene therapy required the most complex set of supply chain and logistics requirements we've seen in the history of biologics. What are the necessary steps of this just-in-time manufacturing and delivery for personalized therapies? And what are the key challenges here? These are individualized therapies. You can't just put a pallet and, you know, put a recipe in and expect that the cake is going to be baked the same way every time. <laughs> so, the, I'd say the number one key challenge, anytime you have a 
individualized protocol and individualized therapy, you're asking care providers, apheresis nurses, surgeons, you're asking these uh, specialists to participate in a manufacturing process, which they've never, never had to do before. That's entirely new. And that bestows different liabilities upon those stakeholders and also just asks them to participate in processes that are often, you know, the only opportunity to provide a single therapy for a patient. These patients are often very ill, very progressed in their disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. But I wonder what happens during the actual manufacturing process. I assume you first collect the relevant cells from a patient or donor. But what happens next? Then you have to schedule uh, a, a slot in the four-walled manufacturing facility, the GMP facility. That's where Lonza steps in. Once you've actually procured the substrate, the cell substrate, that's where Vanetti comes in. Vanetti helps really align the point of care with that manufacturing facility, ensuring, again, there's precision and that the specialty courier, that they're all coordinated, all looking at a single source of truth in a single orchestration platform that, again, provides chain of identity, chain of custody. So using your platform at the point of care means that it comes into a direct contact with many different people, all the medical personnel involved. Have you adjusted the interface for their requirements or will they need any special training? So first and foremost, we acknowledge when we started the company, that for the first time ever, just as I mentioned earlier in the program, we had providers participating in GMP manufacturing process. That's a paradigm shift right there. So we studied user behavior. We studied the care provider's behavior. We studied specialty courier's behavior. We studied what manufacturing personnel's behavior and translated that into a set of user interface that's highly specific, that really meets each one of these users where they are in their expectations and behaviors, frankly, how they interact with other systems to do their work. Then we've been heavily investing in the infrastructure. It's really the smart plumbing of the actual software itself. And instead of delivering software that's customized to each manufacturing uh, provider, each partner, we have one platform. It's one line of software code that has a level of configurability in modules at the top that are not customized. So the cell and gene therapy space is very dynamic. Processes are being advanced as we speak. But so are the regulatory requirements. Can you help to streamline the regulatory approvals for these therapies too? There's a ton of different ways that uh, not just different markets, but countries within those markets are approaching chain of identity and how they're requiring therapeutic manufacturers to produce chain of identity. So we at Vanetti, this is an easy example for us because it's really our bread and butter would like to see a universal chain of identity convention so that it's very clear to all the parties involved that the chain of identity needs to look a certain way. So if the combination of industry input, because industry knows, frankly, what works best uh, for their own process and production, could also align with regulators, that would be in my mind, sort of low-hanging fruit, an easy way to promote alignment um, among our industry and regulatory partners. But there's a long, long list of other uh, processes and ways we can, again, improve expectations, improve how these uh, therapies are reviewed and approved. So we see lots of opportunities there for streamlining and universalizing standards um, to help speed regulatory review and approval for sure. Does this mean that for you the ideal solution for personalized medicine would be open source or streamlined across countries? So I think that certain aspects of process and production could be open source. Uh, I think obviously the protocols themselves are sacrosanct and sometimes there is really trade secret in the process production. 
sometimes they're they're intermingled. But I think the opportunity to combine forces and even economies of scale in the parts of the production that can be universalized, again, where you have a sort of rising tide lifts all boats approach to really making our market an industry, then I think that industry should really collaborate. In a previous episode, we talked about bioprinting and how it can open up new possibilities for personalized treatments and even artificial organ transplants. Could Vinetti help in this area too? Do you plan to expand there? Absolutely. Actually, a big part of my career was spent uh, working on stem cell science. There's a whole bunch of really interesting problems to solve there. And it's fascinating to see where the science is, is coming out now. There's been a tremendous amount of progress. Um, and so we absolutely have relevancy for, uh, for that area. And now the big question all of our listeners want to know, what's next for Vinetti? More of the same, right? We are just working every day, every night, investing in our platform, investing in our partners and their experience of the platform, the support from the platform. Um, building an enterprise as a service platform is a continuous effort. So that's a big push for us this year. And again, will allow a level of control, a level of participation to really ensure that those workflows are keeping pace with the rapid advance of medical science. Thanks, Amy. Personalized therapies require a complex system of tracking. It's amazing to see how your platform addresses all of these challenges. Thank you. This was really fun. Stay well, stay healthy. <laughs> you too, Amy. Thanks. And before I finish this episode, the ideal runtime for us is up to 12 minutes. However, for this particular episode, I would like to let you listen to one area where Amy was explaining the relationship between the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and the challenges they see in the CGT therapy space. So as a little bonus, here's what Amy had to say. So the context is we have you know, tens of millions of people to deliver vaccines, often multiple doses, temp control. There's some complexity, none of the complexity that we serve in our market, but still some measure of complexity and just the level of urgency and mass distribution that is rarely seen. That's going to uncover a whole bunch of, again, not just inefficiencies, but deficiencies. So uh, other um, investors have come to Vanetti and, and other members of the broader pharma ecosystem to say, how can we learn from, again, your focus on an incredibly complex part of the therapeutic spectrum? How can we also provide, again, we talked earlier about that source of truth, that level of control around chain of identity, even if that chain of identity were 500,000 doses, you know, how would you, how could you help uh, improve the level of sophistication and control, uh, even for a broader distribution in pharma? So it's been an interesting, I see, unexpected output of this, uh, uh, of this COVID situation. And it's, it's actually remarkably parallel to if you just take our segment in CGT, right? Here we have a situation with COVID-19 where we delivered, we the scientific community delivered vaccines in historical timeframes, right? On record breaking timeframes, uh, the mRNA platforms of course have been under development for years and years, but the deployment and the rapid cycle discovery was really unprecedented. Then you switch to, okay, we have efficacy, remarkable efficacy, unbelievable timeframes for discovery how do you distribute those en masse? And that's honestly, sim it's similar to what we're seeing in CGT. We have this unbelievable medical science that's been unleashed in the CRISPR uh, framework. And then we have a, an ecosystem of partners who are working hard and as hard as the, as the investigators here to try to absorb the, the output of that discovery and to do it in a way that provides safety, of course, first and foremost for the patient, efficiency, economies of scale, 
seeking to help industrialize a field. So again, we can reduce COGS, we can, by reducing COGS, we can extend access to more patients, but it's a really interesting tension that's actually quite similar to the tension we're seeing playing out in the COVID-19 experience is that the medical science is just leapfrogging and those of us who play in the ecosystem who are responsible for distribution and ensuring that the production delivery process works as it's as it's supposed to, we are we are working hard and we're trying to keep pace with the science to absorb that science and then translate it into uh, improved patient outcomes. So we in the CGT world have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, we bring a lot of humility to our work every day because of the complexity. Uh, we try to learn wherever we can. We're a continuous learning organization for sure. We are very indebted to our partners because they really enable most of our learning. Um, but it is this constant dynamic where you're, we're trying to adjust and invest appropriately to support the complexity because the complexity is ever evolving thanks to the power of the underlying medical science. Join us next time as we discuss the exciting field of vaccine development and manufacturing.